Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Rule the Waves 3 with me, Alpha by Omega, and the German Empire, or the Kaiser Wilhelm Marine. So I'm back with the 1895 edition of our report on the state of the Navy. And I've actually added a couple of slides which I think you might find interesting. Uh, it means a little bit more work for me, but as the time progresses, we will see more and more information coming our way, which we can then analyze and have fun with. Anyway, let's get on with it. So the diplomatic situation of the German Empire. We are actually, for the first time since the very start of this, this game and these reports, uh, doing fairly well. We have only one nation with which we have worse relations than five, and that's uh, England or Great Britain. Damn, I need to change that name. It keeps uh, always, always it's stuck on my mind, but it's Great Britain. So with Great Britain, uh, we used to have 10, 11, now we have 6, so strained relations. Uh, they decreased by 2 since the last time we updated this sheet. Uh, we have a couple of nations with which we have high tensions though, France, Italy and... Um, France, Italy, and Spain, and with Russia, uh, Austria-Hungary, and uh, United States, we have neutral relations. With uh, Japan, we have an alliance. But we can see a couple of nations that are very close, or if not very close, then close to war, uh, most notably Spain and United States. They are both at 10, which is just two steps away from the outbreak of a war. And Japan still has fairly strained relations with Russia. They're at 7. And they have been, you know, going up and down for quite some time due to Sakhalin issue. Uh, if, of course, Japan is going to be dragged into a war, we are going to assist them. I'm not saying that we're not. But I would prefer if they didn't, <laughs> honestly. So let's hope that's not going to happen. Uh, but I would really like the war between Spain and the United States. I would actually like it so much that if uh, it happens, we might want to escalate our relations with Spain to a war as well. Because uh, Spain is much weaker than us and we could take it. And if we can actually jump into this kind of war, then it might be something to be gained for ourselves. Though I'm not entirely sure what, we're going to check it in the game if there is something that we might actually like. I don't remember off the top of my head what kind of colonies they have. I know that they have uh, Cuba, but it's too far away and would uh, pitch us against the United States. Uh, I would like to look if they have something uh, in the Far East where we have um, several of our colonies. And we'll see, we'll see. But, you know, I'm not saying that we're going to do it. It's just that uh, potentially that could be a good move on our side. Anyway, the tonnage comparison. Uh, this has been a fairly slow year compared to the previous one where we started uh, tracking this. You can see that only Great Britain, Russia and Germany added uh, more than 10,000 tons. Great Britain added 22,800, uh, Russia added 19,300 and we added 14,100. Uh, Austria-Hungary added 6,300 tons, uh, Spain added 7,000 tons, Japan 6,000 tons, Italy 5,400, and USA 4,600. And in an interesting twist of uh, fate, France didn't move its tonnage at all. So it means that Russia was able to jump over them with their addition of nearly 20,000 tons and they are now the second biggest navy. However, you know, it's kind of interesting to see that this year was kind of slow and it really well shines a light on the fact that we just need to keep adding more and more ships so that we can keep up the pace with other great powers. Now we're much, much, much stronger than Japan at this point, or Spain. We have about, uh, well, we have nearly the, um, we have nearly this, uh, we, wow, we have nearly twice the size of the Navy than Spain. Jesus, that was way harder than I thought it would be. And it goes almost the same for Japan. They have only roughly 1,100 tons more than Spain. Uh, but together, when you look at us in Japan, we still have a little bit more than Russia, but that doesn't really mean that we would win. 
It just means that we could maybe put up an equal fight, but we will see. I intend to continue the build up as you know as uh, much as possible for as long as possible, and hopefully we can reach to a hundred thousand tons without an issue. But I wonder where the other nations are gonna go. We've had a couple of messages that Great Britain keeps increasing their uh, budget, just you know skyrocketing. So I think that they will continue. Uh, just increasing faster and faster but we'll see we'll see here is one of the new slides that i actually added uh, because we have been playing for six trackable years now and thus i think it makes sense to start tracking also the tonnage comparison year on year now it is Worth to be said that the quality of the picture is not entirely great. I had to stretch it and, um, you know, um, resize it so it fits into the sheet. And I had to do it as a picture because if I import it as a graph from Excel, it actually puts it into the gray scale. And while that is not a problem on other places, for this much information, I think that having it on a gray scale would make it uh, pretty much unreadable. But as you can see, Great Britain is just, you know, out there. There's nobody. I mean, honestly speaking, even if Great Britain, France and Italy challenged, uh, sorry, if Germany, France and Italy challenged Great Britain all at the same time, it is still very likely that Great Britain would win. It's that much of a size disparity. But we'll see. Again, it's always important to mention that Great Britain has its forces tied around the entirety of the world. So, you know, if you play someone, for example, like Austria-Hungary or, well, not Spain. Spain has colonies, but uh, Austria-Hungary is a good example, or Italy. If you don't have colonies and you can put all of your eggs in one basket, you can uh, resist them quite effectively. But for us, that wouldn't be the case because we have colonies in Far East, in Africa, and we just wouldn't be able to effectively defend them against such an onslaught. Now, this is the second new slide that I added. This is a tonnage comparison combined, meaning that here you can see the overall growth of uh, the assets in the game, and they're combined. Um, or actually the, the combined um, amount of the assets in the game and they're split per nation. So you can see that we as Germany are growing pretty rapidly. So is Great Britain, uh, France, pretty much everyone is growing. Interestingly enough, we have surpassed uh, 1,450,000 tons, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, we're, we're closing on one and a half million tons from the starting, what was it, nine? 860,000, I didn't check the total number, but um, there is quite a naval race going on. Every single year, this number grows, as you can see, and it grows quite rapidly. So it's interesting to see, it's gonna start turning around, I believe, around 1900, 1910, uh, and or at the point of some major conflicts. So we'll see, we'll see. And this is the last uh, slide that I added to the diplomatic part. This is a tonnage comparison relative to each other, which I also think is kind of important because it shows you the percentages of the respective navies have on the 100% of the tonnage in the game. So, for example, you can see that we, as Germany, were at the very bottom, actually keep increasing our share in the game meaning that while everybody is growing as you can see on this this graph our relative share of the whole pie is actually increasing which is what we need to have because we could be growing pretty dramatically and still be shrinking as a percentage which is not something you want to see I actually don't know if there's anyone like this here. Spain seems to have a relatively same share. So does Austria-Hungary. Japan increased from... The, yeah, I think that Russia is definitely losing ground when you look at it. It had way more, uh, more of a share in the beginning. Uh, so did France and actually so did Great Britain. I feel like these nations are all losing a little bit of ground. Hmm, interesting. It's going to be way more readable, of course, uh, the more years that are going to be. We're going to start seeing trends 
over a long period. But right here, the trend that I'm interested in is that Germany is growing. And that's that's what we need to see. Okay, now economy and budget. This has unfortunately been yet another year where we have lost a little bit of uh, budget. We dropped 206,360 Reichsmark per year, which translates into a per month budget of 8,863 Reichsmark. Uh, a sort of a shrinkage of or a decrease of 2.72 percent so since our high this has been third decrease in a row yeah so after that you know really rapid growth uh, we have constantly been losing money ever since unfortunately that's how the game goes and again you know it's been only a couple of years so far we're gonna definitely see uh, you know a major increase once another crisis pops up and if you ask me, I'm really not interested in having war with uh, Great Britain. So uh, I'm kind of happy that we averted that, even if it means that we have lost a little bit of money. And I think that this begin the rush in the beginning actually uh, was really great because it gave us a lot of money to play around with. And the fact that it's now slowly decreasing doesn't really matter all that much uh, because a steady increase to the point where we are instead of this rapid growth and then slow decay i think we don't have uh, you know as much uh, of a money to play or well, we definitely wouldn't have <laughs> it's, it's simple math uh, we definitely wouldn't have that much money as we do now so you know in, in a way uh, you need to count your blessings uh, total expenses are actually much better than they were last year. This is connected to the fact that we lost nearly half of our cash at hand. We currently are sitting at uh, 7,846 Reichsmark, uh, which is 7.37% of our yearly budget. I think we were at something like 13,000 last year, so it's good. It's, it's what we wanted, honestly. Uh, but now we need to make sure that the total expenses are not going to go over 100%. They're actually at only 84.86% at this point, which is not bad. Uh, it is relatively good, uh, good spending. Uh, we will have about 1400 uh, in cash every single month from now on. And I think we're finishing another heavy cruiser in like two months. So if that happens, we're going to drop even significantly lower. But uh, we're going to burn this money almost immediately on the Project Berlin or Project Berlin. Uh, and uh, we're going to design our a new flagship. We're only going to be building one, though. Um, I plan to build three or four over the course of the game. Uh, before we move on to the next thing but uh, at this point we're gonna always be building one to save up on money and I really don't want to be that top heavy when it comes to battleships we need more white cruisers which are still our priority and heavy cruisers so uh, we're not gonna go overboard on the battleships the moment we finish the Deutsche Kaiser as well, I am going to move our old aged uh, battleships to the colonies as I keep saying every single year and uh, we're going to be done with that part of the plan. The ship cost has increased by 14% this year, so we are currently sitting at 31% of our budget being spent on uh, maintenance. Fortifications increased. Uh, by 8% as well to nearly 3% of our budget. Construction dropped by 43% year on year, but that's because we finished a lot of ships and we're gonna increase that with uh, the new project that we're making. And research is sitting on 12% as well. Now, when it comes to research, uh, we have gained a couple of new levels. It's actually kind of interesting how uh, so far it looks like we are even on across the board. I wouldn't really be uh, surprised if we get torpedo technology te uh, next or a level in torpedo technology next we've gotten all almost all of the ones that we uh, missed which was light forces and torpedoes uh, explosive shells and fleet tactics so the only one that we're actually missing is torpedo technology uh, fleet overview well what am i to say here uh, our current amount of battleships is six. We're building one more. This didn't change, I think. We have three of the old uh, Weisenbergs and uh, three of the new uh, battleship type that we have uh, 
you know, we finished three of the four ships of the Deutsche Kaiser, so we have three old and three new ones, and we're building the fourth and last of the class, uh, which will keep, uh, which will carry the name Deutsche Kaiser itself. We've actually finished, uh, I think, a new heavy cruiser last year, and we're still building two, and we finished three of our light cruisers, so we now have ten. No change in the amount of corvettes. This is another new slide that I have added, which shows you the growth of uh, the fleet over time. So in 1890, you can see that we have 20 ships. And now in 1895, we have uh, 27. Wait, did I remember that correctly, the number? It's 21, no, 28 actually. We have 28 ships now. Uh, I also added the distinction between corvettes, light cruisers, heavy cruisers, and battleships. We can see that the, the amount of battleships has increased significantly, and we are also increasing the amount of light cruisers. It also shows that we have um, very few heavy cruisers relative to the rest of the fleet, which is what we received complaints about uh, in the game itself. So, yeah, I plan to do something with that. But our tonnage increased in just the span of uh, the game from 73,800 tons to 138,800. So I believe that we're doing good. We just need to keep up the tempo and make sure that we have a top-notch fleet. I'm actually considering that after the Project Berlin, we are going to revisit our white cruisers and design a new white cruiser, uh, white cruiser type. But with the destroyers and the heavy cruiser uh, crunch that we have ahead of ourselves, I'm still not sure, you know. Let's, let's just uh, take it one step at a time. I don't want to commit myself to anything. So, uh, as far as the ships go, uh, the Weissenbergs, nothing to know there. The Deutsche Kaiser class battleship, we know that the Deutsche Kaiser is actually coming in, what is it, 14 months? Or 15? 15 months. No, 14. Deutsche Kaiser will be finished in March 1896 as the last part of that um, uh, class. Uh, we still have the Project Bedouin design here, uh, which I will use today actually uh, as a template for ourselves. No changes in the Hertha class. Victoria Louise, we're building uh, a third ship of the class, Irene Isabel, which is going to be ready. Okay, so in two months, I remember that correctly. Uh, we have no ships of the first first Bismarck class uh, being constructed, but uh, that is actually one of the ships that I would like to construct a couple of. They're very cheap and um, they're fairly small, and I think that it would really help us with the issue that we have in regards to looking weak in the department of heavy cruisers. These ones could definitely uh, double down as the white cruisers in case we need them. So, or they could be used as white cruisers as well. So, I plan to put a couple of these. Uh, the Prince Adalbert is going to be ready in January next year. So, at the end of this episode, unless something goes wrong, and it's going to be the second ship of the Prince Henry class, you don't plan any more. Uh, we finished the three Gazelle class ships in, at the end of the last episode, so we now have four. We might actually start building a new one in this episode. We're going to just see how much money we have. Um, I really like the fact that they are capable of 21 knots. It's really good for them, and even though they're fairly small, uh, I like uh, you know their speed and uh, the ability to work as screens. Nothing new for the Hellas. The Gefions on the Tethys. Nothing new for our uh, Corvettes either. So that's that. Basis and land fortifications. So we actually managed to get to 19,000 tons uh, as far as our dockyard is considered. We're going to use that for the Project Bedouin very soon and try to utilize all of that extra tonnage well. Uh, when it comes to the coastal fortifications, we finished the first phase of our plan, and I'm actually probably going to give it the rest for a couple of years. I'm really happy with the coastal batteries that we have uh, right now, and I would like to dedicate most of our money to building ships now. So both the core territories of Germany, Eastern Germany, and East Prussia are well defended, and um, the colonies each have one uh, massive 8-inch coastal battery, so that is fine. And the officer corps, uh, we actually lost 
quite a lot of admirals uh, this year. They retired, so we are down to five. We now have six contra admirals, one more than we had before, and the uh, amount of capitans to the or frigate and capitans is the same as before. But I kind of like this uh, the way it is uh, set right now. Five, six, twelve, and thirteen is a pretty good amount of officers. But I still wanted to mention here that we now have an operational naval academy, so I hope that the naval academy will be able to bring us not only. Uh, better officers, but more of them as well. Anyway, that's the end of the report. Uh, so we're gonna jump into the game in January 1895 and see what this year is going to bring for us. Hopefully, only good things. So let us start by checking on what Spain has as colonies, and I actually already see that there are some things that we would like. I don't really care about the American positions Spain have, but um, in the Far East they do have a couple of things. I know that Philippines increased their tensions with Japan, uh, but the uh, islands here, the Caroline, I Caroline Islands, really? Yeah, okay, Caroline Islands. Guam and Northern Marianas would serve us well because this is in the territory where we well okay sorry where we will station our fleets anyway plus we have an ally here so anything of this kind would be good for us and looking at it there's also this area what is that Boygan will okay nobody is claiming that one nor some more we are at a place right now where we could um, make a move for some certain colonies like, uh, what is this, Angola, Mozambique. It would be good, but I don't think that the game is going to give us a chance anytime soon. But we'll see. We'll see. Anyway, uh, we do have a lot of money. Uh, we have a balance of 1342 per month. And ships under construction, yeah. Iran Isabel is gonna be finished in two months. So I actually believe we might. You know what? No, let us end the turn and go all the way until. Uh, let's go until May and see if we can get some more uh, technological breakthroughs because that would help us with the new design of the ship under Project Berlin. And we're gonna save a little bit more cash. Forgetten Captain Scheuern... Scheuern... Scheuer... Run, Scheuer Run, wow, that is a hard name to pronounce. Scheuer Run has shown himself uh, to be of average ability, and Merle has shown himself to be of above average ability. Okay, there's actually something that I haven't really touched on. You can uh, manually assign and reassign officers if you want to, get rid of some of the below average ones, uh, you can promote your officers, and so on. But it costs prestige, and considering we don't really have that much of it to go around, I'm not really doing that anytime soon. When it comes to a war and you have some things like, uh, you know, the flagships and so on, we will definitely make sure that we have the best officers available for those. But at this point, it seems like a pointless waste of prestige to assign them to ships because they can be promoted and reassigned at any moment. Uh, with that said, I think we can end the turn and continue. So, Iran Isabel is commissioned into the Navy. You are asking in an interview which nation you see as the most likely enemy in a future war. What is your answer? You must be prepared to fight against any opponent. I don't see a risk of war in the near future. War is prestige, budget, and tension. It is without a doubt. Can we put Spain there? We can put Spain there. So it is without a doubt Spain. So let's see what that's gonna do. And our scientists reported that they are working on the problem of water tube boilers, but success has so far eluded them. And we have a research breakthrough in the armor piercing projectiles, smokeless powder, improved accuracy and rate of fire. 
Okay, that doesn't really help us with the new design, but it is a good thing nonetheless. I think that's our second level in the armor piercing technology. Uh, Captain Surza Rawa is placed in command of Iran Isabel. And Captain Surza von Dalwick to Liechenfels has shown himself to be of below average ability. Our scientists report that we are that they are working on the problem of water to boilers. And we have a recent breakthrough and intelligence report from Spain. Spanish gun manufacturers are now advertising 11 inch guns. So we increased our budget slightly and we increased the tensions with Spain. So I'm considering whether or not we want to put intelligence on them. I don't plan the war anytime soon, so I think we can still consider this. I think we can still consider this. Uh, a little bit premature. Mm. I don't know. We're gonna have to see. Anyway, uh, let's and well, wow, we have Jesus. We have such a high month of mass. I'm thinking we might want to put a couple of ships into construction at this point before we jump on the project. But I mean, because we still need a couple more. So Gaffion, we wanted to build another of this class before. It costs 597, yeah, we can definitely take one. I'm gonna call this one Electra, because all of the uh, Gaffions have uh, inspiration in ancient Greece. So let's build you, it's gonna take 18 months, I'm fine with that. And we might even put first Bismarck in construction because we wanted to have five of those and again they're fairly yeah they're also very cheap i could build two no problem hmm first bismarck okay let's do that uh i'm gonna name this one first uh Caprivi. And it's gonna be finished in 22 months. Maintenance costs 73, 6. Jesus, these ones are really cheap. And we still have. Okay, you know what? Let's build all of them. We were told that we need more of heavy cruisers, so let's put first, showing first as the next one for construction. And let's build one more. We, we still can do that. And it's gonna be first below. Okay, so we are now building five, six ships. Damn. Okay. So Prince Adalbert is going to be done in 10 months, Deutsche Kaiser in 12 months, Electra in 18 months, first Caprivi in 22 months, first Schilling first. In 22 and first below in 22 months. Okay, I'm fine with that. It's March in June, we are going to design our new battleship, but for now, I think we're good and we're still making money. That's insane. Private shipbuilding is expanding, they increase our max dock size by a thousand tons again. Well, that's good for us. Uh, but I don't think we're going to use all 20,000 tons for the new battleship. So Topi and Ibex finished their working up. Fregatan Captain Graf is promoted to Captain Sur Ze. Fregatan Captain Alberts is placed in command of Medusa. Captain Sur Ze Heitzkuisen is shown uh, to be of average ability. And tensions between Russia and Japan increase because of Sakawa. Actually. Not the almanac, I want to see the relations. Spain and United States, still 10. Hmm. Okay, we'll have to see. I'm just gonna come out of that. Our yearly budget significantly increased uh, due to the choices that we made, so let's hope it's gonna stay there. The Kaiser has made a foreign policy gaffe. You are asked to smooth things over by the, by the Naval Secretariat. I would never presume to undercut the authority of the Kaiser. Divert attention by making a statement criticizing the adventurous foreign policy of Russia. 
that's going to give us a little bit of a budget and tensions. I would really like this one, which would give us prestige, but I believe it's going to increase tensions with everyone, and I'd much rather increase the tensions just with Russia. Or we could increase it with United States. It might be a better choice, actually. Okay, let's divert it by criticizing the United States. And we have a problem with a Lydite bursting charges. Okay. So Admiral Olsen has retired. Contra Admiral Flix is promoted to Admiral instead and placed in command of Northern Europe. Forgotten Captain Helriga is promoted to Captain Surze and placed in com No, actually, Forgotten Captain Kewa is placed in command of Gazelle. Okay, and tensions between the United States and France decreased. Okay, that is fine. We have even more money now. That's just... Okay, I was complaining about not having enough money, and now complaining about having enough money. How is that logical? Okay, the Victoria Louise class it is about to be put into the division here. So that is the... What's it called? Home Fleet Cruiser Support? Yes, the Home Fleet Cruiser Support. So let's add... Uh, 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 where are you? Victoria is here. So the division that we have here is looking pretty good. We have the first Home Fleet, which is Wilhelm the First, Frederick the Third, and Wilhelm the Second Battleships. And then we have the Home Fleet Battleship Support, which is the Weissenberg, Brandenburg, and Wurf. And we then have the Home Fleet Cruiser Support, which is three heavy cruisers of Victoria Louise class. Then we have five ships of the Caffeons working as support. And then we have the Scouts, Gazelle, Zebra, Ibex, and Toby. So this is a fairly good, I'd say a fairly good setup, but we don't have a commander available for these two, the first Home Fleet. First go build. Wow. Okay, you are free, so we can put you actual in the command of the first home fleet. So I'm gonna do that so that we have you commanding these. And we can put who in command of the home fleet support? Anyone with above average ability available? No. Not even average. Ah, okay, so it's not. Let's not bother with that at this point. So it's end of turn. Iran Isabel has finished working up. So forget that Captain Klima of Ariadne White Cruiser is promoted to Captain Surzan, placed in the command of the Home Fleet First Support. Oh, nice! Okay, so we have an above average uh, cap captain uh, put in command. So that's what we wanted, actually. And. A different type of average captain uh, is placed in command of Ariadne. Unexpected delays have affected the building of first Shoeing first. Okay, Iran is above finished working up. Bergas, uh, Capitan Zurza, has shown to be himself of the low average. Fregatan Captain Ryuman has shown himself to be of average quality. Intelligent support from France. France has a budget balance of 6 6. 6.99. That is very much possible. You should be on the construction of class Fox as the top ship of 21 knots. The ship San Luis were reported with be commissioned in 10 months and there are rumors that the Spanish scientists have troubles mastering the principle of wireless telegraphy. Uh, we might as well because I don't know that we are nowhere near that. Okay, one more month and then we're gonna jump and look at the battleship. The government has concern. The government is concerned about tensions feeding the war. You have been called to give advice. What do you recommend? We should call an international. No, if you want peace, prepare for a war. Uh, we could negotiate an agreement with Austria-Hungary. We have fairly good relations with them, so that could work through. Treaty negotiated for Austria-Hungary. Nice. Okay, and Contra Admiral Schneider left our service. So do we have 
an alliance with both of these? We do! Okay, so we have an alliance with Austria-Hungary and Japan. Their tensions with Russia increased to 8 though. Not great. And there's no new development between Spain and the United States. One well, that actually kind of, you know, it's not great. I'm just going to put this almanac here because we want to start working on our new design next. So we have a lot of money in the bank and we have a big monthly balance which is available for us. So let's design a new dreadnought battleship. So let's use some kind of design that they are going to offer us. Nope, that is too small to put you to. Let's go to 18,000 tons. Nope, nope, no, nope. those are all small. Something bigger game. We have something bigger. 15,200, 12,500, 10,000, come on. Come on. Let it in. So the next one that's above 14,000 tons, I'm gonna take and start working with it. 12,700, 10,700, come on. Okay. So Zuringen, not really the ship that I want, but okay. So first of all, we need to increase the caliber. We know that we want the 12 inch guns. We don't have the 13 inch ones, just the 12 inch ones, so that is absolutely okay. We also want its speed to be of at least 20 knots. Uh, we do want the secondaries to be of 8 inches and we want the tertiary guns to be of 3 inches. So this is okay. Now, uh, you have a narrow belt. I want a normal belt. That is something that I want. Medium range, freeboard normal, normal accommodation, that is good. Wait, we do have a torpedo defense available? No wingo design. Oh no, we haven't. Okay, good. So that's what I was uh, afraid of. Okay, now let's look at the belt. Let's put it to 11 inches. Extended belt can be... Let's put it at 2. Upper belt is going to be at 2 as well. For now, anyway, deck 2 inches, extended about 1 inch. Let's put conning tower on 11. Turrets are going to be at 11 as well, so they you know, have the same uh, same exact uh, setup as the belt. Turret top, let's keep it at 2, and secondary gun is going to have 4 inches. Okay, so now we just need to increase the size dramatically to fit everything in, if that's possible. Okay, so at 18,000, if we went to 19,000, we would still have 246 tons available and we can fit everything we want. Okay, the speed here to 21 knots is achievable, the next one wouldn't. Uh, but we need more rounds. Yeah, and here we're starting to struggle, 176, 220, so let's lower that. And we would need to increase the tonnage to 20,000, which we actually could. But I'm not entirely happy with that. Okay, we have way too many torpedoes. Port broadside, port broadside. We have, why do we have you? So read this one and read this one and instead I'm gonna give you an aft torpedo tube because it can be good to shoot at someone who is trying to chase you. So I kind of like that. Uh, the 12 inch guns are amazing. We've already established that. We have quite a lot of the secondaries. If I went down to 10 We need to lower the size of the ship.
So I've let a short a while to go all the way to 18,000 tons. Which is for deck on belt. Sub deck. And 19,000 tons, that would be. Still a little bit overweight. I believe I could roll. Yeah. So if we're okay with only 10 8 inch guns secondaries, we can do it like this. I mean, considering the previous design that we had was, was using these as primary guns. Mm. I don't really have an issue with that, I'll be completely honest. But, but I would like to have 12. I don't think we'll be able to do that. Deck, ex deck extended to high corning. This is a beast of a ship. I'll, I'll be absolutely honest. This is a beast of a ship. With these guns and so many secondaries and tertiaries at this speed, it will be able to actually take out anyone that's going to come after it. The only issue that I have is the low remaining weight, because... It's really heavy and using everything it has to the maximum degree. But I can't really find a flaw. Again, this, this as a flagship would be extremely dangerous for anyone coming at us. Which is exactly what we want, honestly. So, okay. So we have the torpedoes there, that's fine. We don't want anything else. We have 19,000 displacement, which is a little bit higher than I wanted to do, but I can go down by even a hundred. Got you there. Okay, this is too heavy. That's fine, that's fine. Okay, I guess I'm I guess I'm okay with this. I'm trying to think of something else, but I don't see why. Why are we suddenly Oh wait, ah, okay, we need it like this, gotcha. Okay then, yeah, we're just gonna bite the bullet and design this. Uh, Project Berlin is actually going to lead to us building a class named Donau. So Donau is going to be the next flagship of our navy. One last check, 20 knots, 11 inch belt, 12 inch guns, 8 inch secondaries. After torpedo tube has been added. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay. Okay, it's gonna be 20% larger than the largest battleship in the world. It would be a challenge for the German shipbuilding industry. I'm okay with it. It's gonna cost us 4297 and take three months. We're gonna pay for that and we're gonna keep the monthly balance as it is. So let's end the turn, see what the game will bring. The socialist party is doing well in opinion polls and might want to press for reduced armament expenditure after the upcoming elections. What do you do? Suppress so all social propaganda in the navy. Meet with the leaders and talk about the importance of a strong navy. Do nothing. It is a political matter after all. Hmm. I'm definitely not going to hit the prestige. Let's do nothing. It's a political matter after all. Social reform passed by the Reichstag. And our scientists report are working on a problem of counterfeiting valves. Okay, so we lost a level in unrest and we're paying a little bit more. Well, I mean, we're getting a little bit less from the state. But the euro budget has increased significantly, so we can consider this a win. The Austrian government is interested in buying the rights to armor piercing projectiles, smokeless powder for 2350. By all means, cash is good. Japan ordered Fuso class in one of our shipyards. Tensions between Austria and Greenland increased, and Great Britain has reduced naval spending. Okay, that's interesting. 
they ought to. They goddamn it ought to, but it's interesting to hear it nonetheless. So the design study for the Donau is gonna be done next turn. I'm gonna put the first one into production. Temporary setback in figuring out the concept of improved design calculations. Okay. So Great Britain increased its navy spending again. Problems in the development of equipment has delayed the construction of Prince Adalbert and first below. Okay, well, that's fine. Our latest design to know is ready for construction. So let's go to build screen and bite the bullet and put one of these beasts in there. 29 months at 2238. Okay, the first ship is of course going to carry the name of the class and it's gonna be Donau. Looks like the design, yep. So, 29 months before this beast leaves the dockyard, but it's gonna be well and worth it. Water to boilers. We're researching water to boilers. Contra Admiral Weinecke is promoted to Admiral and Poison Command of Northern Europe. We have bill average guys everywhere. Forget that Capitan Alberts has shown himself to be above average. Okay. I go play and the game finds a way how to soothe me. So just just humor me. <laughs> okay, so we're bleeding out a little bit of money, but it's fine. There has been an internal upheaval in Albania. Italy is apparently sending a force there. Ostensibly to restore order, but likely they have more far reaching plans. We should issue an ultimatum demanding that you back down. It was unimpressed by our ultimatum and completely occupies Albania. Uh, okay, that's not great. So they managed to get it this time. <laughs> and we increased tensions kinda without any reason. A revolution in a, an African country has left some of our national stranded. What do we do? Send a strong squadron of bomb to bombard the capital. Join the international squadron sent to contain the violence and resolve the crisis via diplomatic means. Join the international squadron. It's gonna increase the tensions further. And hey, water to boilers, light machinery, light machinery for destroyers. Okay, Captain Surza Glimmer of Home Fleet first support is promoted to Contra Admiral. And Kettner is placed in command of Brandenburg, Italy, and next uh, Albania, and machinery development. Okay, that fairly greatly increased the tension, I don't like that. But Spain and United States are at 11, while we at worst are at 9. Okay, but we really shouldn't uh, rile up in, you know, Italy more. Okay, so we're bleeding a little bit of money. But how is it, ha how is it going? Prince Adalbert, which will solve all of our financial issues, is going to be finished in two months. Deutsche Kaiser is going to be finished in three turns. Then comes Electra. Then we're going to build in rapid succession the first Bismarck free ships that we have put in the construction 13, 14, 14 months and now is going to be built in 27 months meaning in two years and a little extra. War has broken out between USA and Spain. Okay, so finally a conflict. Problems in delivery of equipment has delayed the construction of first Caprivi. And Admiral Weinecke is promoted to Fleet Admiral and placed in a post ashore. Contra Admiral Klimmer is promoted to Admiral. And Admiral Klimmer. Okay, we read that. And Contra Admiral von Hoyleufer is promoted to Admiral and placed in command of Northern Europe. Okay, so war has broken out between Spain and. 
USA. How are they doing when it comes to the comparison? So Spain has 101,000 tons and USA has 129,200 tons. They have way more battleships. They have way more heavy cruisers. Way more light cruisers. Much less corvettes. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, Spain, I, I cheer for you. Any good battleship? 12 inch guns, 11 inch belt. It should be fairly hard to sink, but they're very slow. Uh, we'll see. So let's end the turn, the last one in this episode, and Prince Adalbert is commissioned into the Navy. And our scientists report that they have suffered a temporary setback in figuring out the concept of lidite bursting charges. And here we go, first war report. In an engagement in the Caribbean between USA and the Spanish Navy, the Spanish ships Cardinal Jimenez and Cardinal Jimenez de Cisneros has been sunk. Ah, so Spain lost a heavy cruiser. Well, that's not great. I would feel rather better if Spain won this, but they probably won't. Speaking of which, their tonne seem the same as before. <laughs> oh, and I actually went one month over. I didn't realize it's already February. Okay, well, uh, we've done one month more than we ought to, but that's not a major issue. Ships in service, we are doing good. Prince Heinrich over here is the second ship of the class, but these ones are going to be used as, uh, well, as uh, trade hunters or raiders, because they that's why they are good. And the rest is actually pretty fine. So, okay. So the budget is increased to 222,360, which is great for us. Monthly balance is still a little bit in the negative, but that's not a problem. We're building six more ships, including the Donau, which is going to be just a beast. Four 12-inch guns, 10 8-inch guns, and 10 3-inch guns with an 11-inch belt, 11-inch turrets, it is 19,000 tons, and 20 knots. That is amazing. So yeah, on that note, I'm going to end the episode here. Thank you very much for joining me, and I'll see you in the next one. Till then, you guys, take care.